15 years ago, we had just started dating. I was doing a, a dinner party. You know, I like to do these dinner parties at my friend's house. In the old days, you did them at my house. I know. We should do them again. Oh, no. And when I'm cooking, like, I'm, I'm kind of focused. I don't want to fuck up the food. You can talk to me, but just don't make me do other shit. Yeah. Like, now it's not time for me to take out the trash. So my girlfriend, now wife, comes in and she goes, can you just come on here for a minute? There's this guy here who I don't know who's just like hitting on me and it's driving me crazy. Can you just come on and introduce yourself? And I was, I was annoyed. I was like, fuck, fine. I was cutting fish. I set down my knife. I walk out with her. I was like, oh, hey, oh, oh, you're Todd. Hey, Todd, nice to meet you. I'm CJ, Danielle's cousin. <laughs> 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 he, he's like, oh, nice to meet you. And she just fucking glares at me. And I was like, good luck. <laughs> and I just go back into the kitchen. Quiet, please. Oh, man, it was great. In four. It was absolutely three, fantastic. Two. The Apple Company presents a truly terrible podcast. Welcome to Nonsense Season 2, Episode 28. I'm Jeff Parker. I'm Stu Little. This is our take on the week's business, tech, and entertainment headlines. This time, we'll look at AI helping you to remember everything. Or just something, really. I would just like it to help me remember one thing. That would be great. It's National Drowning Prevention Day. Every year, an estimated 236,000 individuals drown, and it's one of the top 10 fatalities of children. Drowning disproportionately affects children and adolescents in rural areas. World Drowning Prevention Day's objectives include teaching swimming, water safety, secured life saving skills and coaching bystanders in safe rescue and resuscitation. Learn to swim and save lives so we can all enjoy the water more safely. And if you have a pool at home and kids, please put up a pool fence. Not just kids. Yeah. If your dog is not a water dog. What the hell is a water dog? Is there like a special breed of dogs called water dogs I don't know about? Oh, there's like Portuguese water dogs. There's like really? all kinds of dogs that love. Do they have like snorkels and scuba tanks? Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be amazing. No, there's all kinds of dogs that love water and then there's dogs that just want nothing to do with water. Like the cat dogs? <laughs> Pretty much yeah. the cat dogs don't like water, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. How is your week going? My week is fantastic. As you know, I am back from uh, vacation. My wife and I went for 11 days to Hawaii. How wonderful. We decided that we wanted to disconnect from the world. And our intent was for at least half of that trip, we were going to a, a, one of the smaller islands, secluded, just wanted to enjoy our time together, you know, put the iPads and phones in the safe and just ig ignore them. Sure. And we said, oh, this will be great. You know, we can really just disconnect. Our kids will be safe with the, my in-laws. Be fantastic. Sure. And then while we're, quote, disconnected. Nothing happened in the world. Yeah, you were know, good. The whole I time know. you were gone, there was no For news. For fuck's sake, literally on our way in, Trump is shot at. So uh, that kind of makes news. And thank goodness the guy missed. Absolutely. And then the entire internet crashes. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Fuck. <laughs> and then like a couple days later, Biden drops out of the race. There were some events. I'm like... Holy shit, any one of these could have happened while I was gone and it would have been oh, yeah. noteworthy, let alone three of what are likely going to be the top five most impactful events of 2024 yeah. all happened while I was on vacation. So if you like uh, your life spicy, clearly you need to send me on vacation more. That's that's my takeaway. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So that was uh, that was my time. But we we really enjoyed it. I cannot speak high enough of the Sensei Resort on uh, um, Lanai Island Lanai, yeah. in Hawaii. It is fantastic. Uh, we had a lovely time. I think I may have converted some of the people there into listeners. We'll see. My wife likes to time how long it takes me to work in reference to the show sure, sure. in open conversation with folks. I'm very good. I'm very creative. Usually the hook, by the way, is I'll say like, oh, blah, blah. Oh, my co-host does fill in the blank and I'll just like make something up sure. and they'll be like, oh, co-host. I'm like, oh, well, I have a podcast. If you must know. Why, of course I do. And then I tell them about nonsense. I'm like, how have you not heard of it? It's kind of great. Anyway, how was your week? Good. I ordered a new thread radio for my smart home gear, which sounds so nerdy, but man, this, nerd. first of all, Matter, which is the protocol that most of my gear uses yeah. is great because it's the universal yep. protocol. And so everything talks to everything else, which is wonderful. Yep. It was matter over Wi-Fi, which works fine. But way better than that is matter over threads. And, and the thread radio to me is super exciting because it's a mesh network. Yeah. And so yeah. every single piece of gear repeater. makes the network better. Anyway, I'm, I'm way too geeky about this. Love it. It's fun. This show is off for two weeks. Yes. What are our listeners going to do other than enjoy their time? Good for them. If there's anything to be learned from my experience, it's that nothing's going to happen in the next two weeks. There's, <laughs> I'm sure the news will go dark. There won't be any extraterrestrial life uh, visiting us. Feel free to break in if you would like and say whatever you would like nobody wants to hear me by myself no one. oh sure come on you'd be great you'd be no great. no no so so uh two weeks no new episodes maybe we'll float some old stuff back out there but uh everyone gets a break go enjoy your time enjoy the summer. do not let my absence hold you back i'll just come on here and just read random uh amazon reviews maybe that's what i'll do perfect it'll be great let's get to our headlines let's do it. alphabet has invested another five billion dollars in self-driving startup waymo this is good news if you like absolutely waymo cars and i do i'm a big fan they're all over los angeles now and they're just fantastic alphabet is Google and this five billion dollars just means that Google is still committed to Waymo, which is always great because you never know with Google when they're going to just abandon something. They could equally tomorrow just be like, you know what? Uh, we're shutting down Waymo and Gmail. 
then you just be like, exactly. oh, of course, of course Google is. <laughs> like, they're just going to turn those things off. If you haven't, someday Google the Google graveyard yeah. of the various things that they've started up and shut down. It's really impressive. I'm glad they're investing in Waymo, though, because this tech seems to work really well. And I'm excited to see this roll up to more areas. I'm assuming that's where they're looking to spend the money is, is investment in more areas. Hopefully more cars here. We only have 50 cars through all Los Angeles. I'm also interested to see, I'm assuming they're going to be coming out with a new model because they're not making that Jag anymore that they've yeah, in- yeah. included this in. So I'll be curious to see what else they put it in. By the way, that Jag is nice. Yeah, it's super nice. Amazon's paid Alexa is coming to fill a $25 billion hole dug by Echo devices. The Echo devices were a giant loss for Amazon. Of course. They want to do paid AI. I don't know how they're going to do that because there's so much good free AI available. So they're talking about this, you know, there's a bunch of losses that their devices business incurred from like 2017 to 2021. Yeah. It never struck me that they were selling these devices at much of a discount. I mean, you still paid for them. They weren't yeah, yeah, sure. free, but they weren't like... But they were also to help you use Amazon services. Yeah, exactly. Like Fire TVs, you bought content. I don't think you can really call that a loss. Yeah, I, I'll be curious to see. I mean, if you made a really good Alexa Pro or whatever the fuck they're going to call it, uh, maybe you could get me to pay 10 bucks a month for it. Yeah. But man, the bar is really high. Yeah, the bar is really high yeah. for free AI. There's so much good free AI right now. Yeah. And the big story of the week is CrowdStrike, which caused uh, 8.5 million computers to go down. CrowdStrike is blaming test software for taking down all of those Windows machines that shut down airports and hospitals and 911 services and the like. Oh, I didn't hear about this. What, what, what is this? <laughs> Let me tell you this from my perspective. I am at dinner in Hawaii with my lovely wife, just enjoying myself. And I get a text from a very good friend of mine who's a a listener of the show who texts me that a uh, CrowdStrike outage, uh, very bad. My first thought was, it's fucking three in the morning where you live. Why are you awake right now? Because it's really bad. And that told me enough to know that it's really fucking bad. It was very interesting because after dinner, I got back and started digging in on this. And as it turns out, it affected a shit ton of machines. I knew instantly this was going to be the biggest sort of issue, bigger than WannaCry. Sure. As big or or bigger than the McAfee outage we saw, you know, 15 plus years ago. And I was like, this is going to be terrible. I got to watch it unfold as, you know, basically as the sun traveled across APAC and and started to get into Europe before I went to bed. I was I was fascinated by it. Uh, and there was a, a couple of Reddit threads that were that were showing this. And I knew it was going to be super fucking bad. Right. I will say in hindsight, I think it was not as bad as I expected it to be. Folks did get out in front of it. The fix was quote easy. However, it required you to have access to the machine, which is a huge problem, a huge problem, right? Especially if you're managing managing right. tens of thousands of machines. It was it was pretty bad. Right. The IT industry at large seemed to do a really good job responding to this. I think as of our recording on this now, you know, midweek, right. uh, most everything is back. Delta still seems to be having some issues, but I think that's more of a network problem than a, than a, a computer problem or you know, their operational network issue. Everybody did as well as, as can be expected, I, I think, under the circumstances, except maybe CrowdStrike. Except maybe CrowdStrike. Holy shit. Okay, so they have yet to release uh, what we call an RCA, a root cause analysis. They've released what they're calling a PIR, so a a preliminary post-incident review where they're basically saying what happened. Now, I read, of course, some of the news articles. I went and read their actual PIR. I will say a couple things. One, this thing went through the whole PR machine. Both the legal team and the PR department. They're the ones who put it out. It's just public relations throughout it. I got to say, in my opinion, this is an extremely bad look for CrowdStrike. Right. The first 80% of the PIR is all them saying about all of the things that work well. Right. So they talked about a release in March and how it worked fine and it went through their testing and yada yada yada. I'm like, I give zero fucks sure. about what worked well. I want to know what failed. So when I started to see that, my antenna already started to go up of like, okay, they need to fill space. What's the like like what's the real story here? In their their PIR, which is probably about, you know, if you were to put it on, on printed paper, I don't know, two pages long, three pages long. Yeah, yeah, sure. They yeah. dedicate three paragraphs of about a sentence each to quote what happened on July 19th. Three fucking paragraphs, right? A total of like five sentences right, to right. what happened. I got to say, it's terrible. They basically say that they had a validator that had a bug in it and that something went through to the validation test, passed, and then they deployed. Just the fact that you're deploying to everyone all at once is pure insanity. Yes. The fact that you're not rolling out to 2% of the machines and then 10% of the Even machines. Even before you get to that, they have a, how do we prevent this from happening? And it's all bolded and underlined in their PIR. And their, how do we prevent this from happening is fucking comical because they literally say... We could improve our testing by using these things such as. They literally use the words such as. Because they don't want to legally commit themselves to anything. Which tells me they're not committing to anything. Right. And then if you read the the five or six bullets that are under the such as section, it is literally developer, software development best practices yeah, sure. 101. The first bullet is local developer testing. Oh, really? So are you implying that you're not doing local developer testing? That's embarrassing. That whole release is embarrassing. The next one is 
content update and rollback testing. Oh, you're not fucking right. doing that either? It is terrible. You're lucky this only happened this once. Once. Exactly. Okay, now with the headlines. Up next, we're going to talk about remembering everything forever. I already do. You do? Good for you. Yeah, yeah. You owe me 50 bucks from like 1997. What's your name? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. How is your memory? I call the dog my son's name on occasion. Does that happen now and again? No, it never happens. <laughs> But I understand you get to a certain age and you do start calling your kid some other name, someone else's name. That hasn't happened to me yet, but it's coming. Stand by. Have two kids, and let me tell you, it happens straight out of the gate. Maybe that's why, because I just have one. Yeah, it's easier to index one. It's harder to index two, especially when you're angry because they just, you know, spilled a bucket of green paint on your white carpet, and you're like, God fucking God. <laughs> And then you just run through an index of, of names. Barkley, get over. Oh, no, no, it's not Barkley. Who is it? I mean, we used to, as a child, I remember relentlessly teasing my grandmother who had seven children of her own and like 22 grandchildren. Oh, yeah. It's impossible. And impossible she could index. never get it right. And you would just laugh sure. at her. You'd be standing and she'd just be indexing through names, like like flipping through Rolodex cards, trying to get it right. And then it happens to you. And then it turns out all you have to do to have a good memory is suck on a jellyfish. I'm sorry now? Well, what, what now? <laughs> have you never seen the ads for Prevagen? No. It's made from a protein originally derived from the lumescence proteins of jellyfish, and it helps your memory somehow. Are we doing big pharma ads now? <laughs> it's, not, it's not an ad for it. I have no idea if it works or not. That's just what they- It sure as hell sounded like one, the way you just said that. That's just what they say in the ad. Licking toads, sucking on jellyfish. Sipping on gin and juice. By the way, of all the drugs that people take, yeah. oh, I want to get high, I want to get out of sure. my mind, I want to get drunk, I, uh -huh. I would give anything for the drugs that made my, my memory sharper. That's the part that I would care about you know i don't want to lose clarity i want to gain clarity where's those drugs the, the quick answer to this is yeah. i wish my memory were better we're better i wish okay. my memory i'm starting to lose quick grasp of certain nouns yeah i can usually get yep. to most everything else but oh man this is called and then it's just like yeah. lag 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 and you know yeah. usually when we're recording this show and i can't get to the noun you jump in before i can get to it and make me look like I, oh like i knew it all along i just give you the wrong word though i'm like purple monkey and you're like mm, i don't think that's right <laughs> i'll just go with it trust me pretty sure it was dishwasher Pretty sure it was dishwasher. There you go. Love that. We wanted to, to talk a bit today, I think, about remembering things better or forever, right? Ultimately, like, what does sure. what does a forever state look like? As, as a little precursor to this, this is a, a life experience for me. Years ago, tr probably two decades ago, I read a book by David Allen called "Getting Things Done." Oh, sure, sure. And for the most part, I didn't I didn't love the book, but I had some really good takeaways. And the one that I took away from it, from you know, this again, my personal experience was he talked about writing things down yeah. and freeing your brain, right? And at the time I read it, I was like, I already do this. Like, this isn't helping me. Right. But there was one significant difference that he said that did help me, which was, it's not enough to just write it down. You got to write it down. You got to trust where you wrote it down. Because I'd write shit down, like, you know, pick up Jeff from the airport Friday at 9 a.m. Put it up on a post-it and shove it in your pocket. Well, I'd even put it in the calendar, but I wouldn't trust the calendar, right? I still used my brain to index it. And oh, no. what I believe was happening is my brain was just like running through this for loop, trying to build yeah. a synaptic connection. Sure. So it was just like subconsciously just be remembering, pick up Jeff Friday. Friday, 9 a.m. LAX. Now, once I started trusting where I wrote it down, a lot of things shifted for me. You want to get rid of that for loop in your brain. And like, I don't have a lot. I'm like a 286 with no turbo button pressed. Like, I don't have a lot of extra <laughs> processing power. So like, I need that loop back, right? So by not having that. But you that, do have a pretty good memory of the history of computers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, because that's all burnt into ROM. So you can't really oh, totally, replace that, totally. right? Like, those proms are permanent. All the lyrics to every song from the 70s, I can remember perfectly. The Order of the Presidents, absolutely no idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, Washington. Blah, Nixon <laughs> like, and think, Bush. I'm not and sure. And Bush. And then I think uh, there's Obama in there somewhere. And that's it. We're done. Yeah. So that made a, it actually made a big difference. And, and for things like phone numbers, right? You use your contacts. You're not typing in phone numbers. No. For calendars, use my calendar. One of the biggest shifts for me in this whole write things down and trust it was using a note capture platform. I started with Evernote yeah. and migrated off that before it became the dumpster fire that it is. You and everybody else. A, yeah. No shit. Talk about ruining such a great product. But having a place you could write stuff down and then search it. Man, I don't have to remember that that shit anymore. Yeah. And then you'd argue the extension of that for, for just human knowledge is something like Wikipedia, right? Wikipedia is great because they don't have to remember those things. Right. And one of my favorite games to play, I'll be like with you and we'll be talking about something. I'll be like, oh, we're trying to figure out who the, the name of the, the star in Goonies. Yeah. And it's like, I don't Josh remember. Brolin. Let's not use the internet. Let's do this the oh, quaint yeah. old fashioned way and see if we can get our brains to sure, recall it. Sure, sure. And I'd say, you know, maybe a third of the time I can get it and two thirds of the time I can't because like, like I try really hard just because I am starting to get older and I yeah. do want to keep my memory working. Now, my uncle 
Michael is older than I am by another, whatever, 12 years or so. Uh-huh. They were driving up on I-5 and they couldn't think, what's the name of that plant? That plant that we see it everywhere next to the free. Oh. He couldn't get Oleander. Oh, and Oleander, of course, yeah. he grew up with Oleander and they couldn't. And they finally, after 20 minutes of trying to figure it out, they finally had to look it up. I think it's another example where if you relax, you've got a better shot at getting it. I don't know why certain things just fall out of your brains. And, and, and other things, bye-bye, Miss American Pie. I can recite to you every lyric. Do I need this in my head? Can yeah, I yeah. have that space yeah. back? Yeah, there's something, especially with music, it does seem like that builds a stronger connection. There's something about, I don't know, uh, um, yeah. enticing more of the senses at the same time. I find this, so with music, I'm pretty good, not as good as you. But where, what I do find, this is one of my the most frustrating for me in t- t- memory recall, smells. Every now and again, I'd say about once every month or two. Oh, for sure. I come across a smell and I'm like, oh shit, I know this. Oh yeah. But I can't index it. And I try and I try and I try and I'd say maybe half time I can figure it out. But oh man, like shit where I'm just like, wait, what is that? I know this smell from somewhere. And not like yeah. jasmine, not like a describable smell, but it's like a set of smells, a set of frequencies that together remind me of a thing. And sometimes I just can't get to it. I don't have that super strong for visual things. Like if I look at a sweater or an outfit on TV yeah. and then I see somebody else wearing that outfit in a different context two months later, my brain doesn't connect those things really naturally. Sure. But I can do voices. Mm. If I've heard your voice before and now you're doing a voiceover in an animation where I can't see your face, but I hear your voice. Oh, wow. That's impressive. I can get you pretty fast. Wow. That's pretty good. My grandfather on my mother's side passed away probably 45 years ago or so. Okay. Okay. I can still hear his voice in my head. Wow. Perfectly. That's crazy. I can still hear my grandmother's voice in my Now, on my dad's side, we have recordings of both the grandparents, so that's a little bit cheating. But the ones we don't have recordings of, I can still remember those sounds vividly. That's impressive. And I want to talk about that because I think that is that is a version of remembering forever, right? You are remembering these things. You have still this fingerprint of, sure. of, of voices. I don't know if you ever saw this episode of Taxi. Yeah, yeah. Reverend Jim. Love Taxi. Yeah, totally, totally. A Reverend Jim asks Elaine sure. out for a date. Okay. Which is such a charming idea. And he dresses up. Sure. And he gets all ready and he does, you know, his hair is always normal, crazy and he's a like sloppy. He gets all dressed up and he combs his hair and he looks beautiful and everything. And he shows up at her house and he knocks on the door. You can feel his nervousness, right? Sure, he knocks sure. on the door and she opens the door and she's like in a robe and she's not dressed and she's not made up. She's not. And he's, you know, kind of confused. He's come a day early. <laughs> okay. First of all, better to come a day early than a day late. No, of course, right? of course. That's, that's pretty crazy, though, because... Things you anticipate, of course. you know, they're in the forefront of your mind. You don't lose them. And some fact, sometimes you expedite them. Of course, of course. Uh, but time is also a really hard thing for many of us to remember. That's very interesting that you bring up the taxi story because Mary Lou Henner, she has this condition called hyperthymasia, yeah. which is not to be confused with with hyperphantasia, which is a, a different condition I'm we'll talking about in a second. Sure. In real life, she's like one of only a handful of people that have this. Hyperphantasia is different. You may actually have that based on what you just said. That's the condition of having what they say is extremely vivid mental imagery. Minor sounds, not necessarily images, but it's the same well, idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, when it's in your brain, what's the difference, right? Like whether or not you, because you're not seeing it with your eyes, right? You have a recollection of it. So I'm, I'm being a little loose with the word image. Yeah, yeah. It, it's described as, as vivid as real seeing, right? Like people that can see it in their minds. Uh-huh. I think this is where you'll, you'll hear people call it like photographic memory. Yeah. While most has been visual, they've even said that there's sort of a lack of research on the other senses. I think you're just in the bucket of the other senses. Mine is definitely sound. I, I, de- yeah, I can sure, remember sure, sure. things so much better from sound than I can from image. I don't know why that is. I'm really good with, with music that I know, right? Songs that I grew up with, 70s, 80s, 90s. Usually within the first bar or two, I can name the song. Yeah. So I can get it really quick. Like that, like you'll be in a bar somewhere and I'll hear it and I'll be like, oh, this is, you know, whatever, Red Hot Chili Peppers, yada, yada. And then people are like, oh, and they just get there later. Yeah, sure. So I can do that pretty good. Not with voices, not not like you can with voices. I do have the good ability to see things. So this, what I, what I think is also this, this hyperphantasia. I can see things from the past. I can't see them in the future. That's not so good. That'd be nice. But I can see them from the past. Like what? What's something you can see from the past? I don't, I don't think think I have that skill quite as much as you do. There's there's the higher end of it, I'll call, where I, I can actually see the state. I can tell you the table we were sitting at when we had lunch three years ago. Oh, wow. And I can be like, oh, it was right there in the corner. And I know that pretty well. Yeah. There's the sort of in-between that can drive me a little fucking crazy, where like I might be trying to remember some aspect of you know physics, and I can tell you what the book was, like the physics book I was reading in, roughly how far into the book I was, the side of wow. the page that it was on, but I can't remember the fucking thing. <laughs> so I can, 
<laughs> I can tell you, I end up in that state more often than not, where I can just remember all of the things around. I'll be like, hmm. and this has happened before when I've met with people. Like, this is a real story that happened, I don't know, 15 years ago. I'm sitting at a bar meeting, waiting to meet some old friends that we haven't, haven't really had a dinner together in almost 10 years. Just me. None of my friends are there. I'm early, which is also bizarre. And there are two women at the end of the bar. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, fuck, one of these women looks really familiar. Like, I've got the face print in my mind. Yeah, yeah. And I go over to her and I said, hey, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think we dated like 15 years ago. And she goes, uh, no. And I said, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. And she goes, and I said, I, I remember where you lived. I remember you had a cat. Yeah. Uh, I remember where we went to eat. We, we went to Campanile, which is- Can't remember your name. Don't know who you are. Can't remember your name, but I can remember all of these things. Yeah. She just said, no, none of those things are about me. And I said, okay. I apologize. Like, you know, can I buy you guys a drink? Like for your... And her friend says, wait a minute, tell us the story. Like you clearly remember all these things. Tell us the story. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So I tell them the story of where I met this woman and where we went to eat. And she's like, well, why did you never keep in touch? And I said, well, this, this actually happened. We went out, we had a great dinner. And then I got a call from her like a week later on a Sunday morning. She called me and she was like, hello. And I said, hi. And she said, is this CJ? I said, yeah. She goes, did you call me last night at 3 a.m.? And I said, no. And she goes, well, I woke up this morning to a missed call. I hit star 60 and your phone rang and I was like you're crazy like, like what the fuck you're talking about hung up the phone figured it out a little while later I had her phone number on a post-it note on the bottom of my phone I actually had a landline at the time yeah and that previous night a bunch of my drunken idiot friends had crashed over at my house when I lived in Hollywood oh, sure one of those fucking morons called her phone number and like what a, and then hung up the phone sure she star 69 in the morning so I was just so embarrassed by this I just never called her again ever just stopped sure and I tell this whole story to them and they just look at me and I'm like are you sure it wasn't you because damn it looks like you and she goes nope and I was like, okie dokie. And as I'm leaving, the friend, I forgot her, the, the friend's name, but it shakes me and tells me her name. And then the other woman, and I'll, I'll change the name to, to not embarrass her here. She says, oh, I'm I'm Helen. And I went, oh, it was you. And from her first name, I got her first name, her last name. I pulled it up in my phone, had her phone number. Yeah. And I told her this and I was like, do you not remember that story? And I was like, no. And I was like, did you not live in Culver City? She's like, I did. And I'm like, did you not have a cat? She's like, I did. And I was like, but that's what I fucking said. How did she's like, oh, I didn't think it was me. And I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. So from the face, I got all of that, right? But I couldn't not get to the name until she said it. Once she said it, that synapse fired went, oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Sure, and I'm sure. pretty sure this is just my brain fucking with me. Like, I think my brain just really likes to fuck with me and like, it just holds things back. Gives like, you some information, but cars. not everything. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My father-in-law is who's past now, was an agent for his entire career. Okay. He could remember not only faces, yeah. okay, no, most people, a lot of people can remember faces. And sure. He could remember faces and he could do the adjustment. If he hadn't seen you in 30 years, oh, he could, he could do the you? age adjustment no. and still know who that person was and could walk up to them and pick up the conversation they were having when the last time they spoke, whatever the conversation was. I mean, <laughs> That's crazy amazing. good memory, like could remember all sorts of things. I can do the the pick up the conversation, cannot do the aging. I am the opposite. Yeah. I'll meet people and they'll like tell me there. I'm like, no, you're not. There's no fucking way. They're like you look like that guy's <laughs> grandfather and they're like shut the fuck up and i'm just totally wrong exactly oh that's fa that's fascinating being able to age in your brain <laughs> yeah. like that is, is crazy it was impressive for sure interesting okay so well okay so that's that's an option of hyperfantasia right which is which is this like you have this vivid imagery i don't think you fully explained mary lou henner's ability no what she has which is this called this this hyperthymasia is a a a syndrome they call hyper superior autobiographical memory and it's a condition that leads people to be able to remember an abnormally large number of their life experience in vivid detail. Now, for perspective, hyperfantasia is rare, yeah. but it's estimated that it's around 2.5% of the population. Okay, so it's a lot of people. So roughly speaking, 3 out of 100, right? So you know a bunch of people. Everyone knows yeah. a bunch of people that have this condition. The ability to picture things To, to picture things, right? This yeah. sort of quote-unquote photographic memory. Hyperthymasia, this is much more rare. As of 2021, we only know of about 62 people on the planet that have this. Yeah. It is unlikely you're ever going to meet somebody in person in your life that has this. Okay. I've met Mary Lerner several times and I'm always fascinated by this because to me, it's it's truly an indexing problem. Like we all have had these experiences. They likely could be in our brain somewhere, sure. but it's like you've got to index it to find it. And she's fascinating. Like she'll she'll literally talk to you and she'll be like, oh, what day were you born? And, and if you're younger than her, you tell her and she'll be like, oh, here's where I was. Here's a sweater I was wearing. This was the weather. And you're just That's like- Absolutely incredible. Now, first of all, she could be totally fucking with you.
with you, but she, this has been proven numerous times. People have sat there with like an almanac and yeah. asked about famous events, things they have data on, and she'll just know the answers. It's all these people in this condition. That's how they test for you. It is fascinating. I've always wondered, would you want to have this? Like, would you want to have the ability to do this kind of recall? Like, how does that strike you? There's such pros and cons to it. Of course. One of the really nice things about having a memory that forgets things is you kind of you kind of softens the edges of life. Totally. Kind of makes things a little bit sweeter. I, I mean, and, and there are some things that are nice to experience a second time, to be surprised a second time and be like, oh, I had the same state of elation before when I discovered whatever, you know, New York style pizza. And then you discover it again. You're like, oh, this is amazing. It's, a, it's like, yeah, a, well, that's the, what the old joke about it. Alzheimer's is the beauty of Alzheimer's is everything's always new to you. Exactly. Well, yeah, but there are some things that are new to you that are great and some things that you just don't want to experience again, right? You're like, sure, sure. oh, I didn't remember not to drink the water in Mexico. Fuck. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should lock this one, like write this one on a post-it note or something or put a little tattoo on the back of my hand. So there are some things I don't need to experience a first time, let alone a second and third time. But how, how would this strike you? Like if I had a magic wand and I could give you this hyperthymasia, would, would you be into it? I probably would. I wish, uh, it, honestly, I really wish I had that amazing, amazing memory that I could just remember all sorts of details. I, there, there are some things I can remember details of. There's some. It's selective. I wish I had it overall. I wish I had it. Yeah, yeah I would love that. that. That's. It's worth not softening the edges to be able to remember sure. the specifics of many, many things in your in your life. That would be great. I mean, I can make. I can say an even sadder version of that if you like. I just want the memory that I had back. I don't even need. Yeah. Extra oh, yeah. ability. Just what I had. Like what I started with was great. Do you remember as a kid, you when you would read a book and you'd finish the book, and by the time you finished, even like a technical book, yeah. you remembered everything, everything. in it. In yeah. detail. That's yeah. just not the case now. Well, I do wonder if part of that is distraction. If you're not focused on it, your brain is pointing at, pointing at other things. Yeah. I have still found, even at my advanced age, things that I'm truly intrigued by and like interested in and engaged in, I, I feel like I'm more focused when I'm trying to absorb that content. And I still can remember that pretty well. It's yeah. it's all of the not that. I think a, a good part of it certainly is age, but also just having to like, there are more things I am responsible for now, like two little fucking children running around. Oh, sure, sure. It requires way, way more. And I feel like I never get the chance to focus. I have no idea what you're talking about with the uh, hyper focused, being able to remember things currently, home automation, two millimeter wavelengths. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, you and I, I do have my areas where yeah. I get obsessed. And yes, I, I remember tons of detail. For the listeners that haven't picked up on this, what Jeff and I like to do is we like to throw little hand grenades at each other and we'll just be like, oh, this is interesting. And we'll just drop a link into the other's lap, knowing the other person's going on a 20 hour rabbit hole of yeah, research. Here's the it. end of your next six months. Yeah, exactly. So we constantly <laughs> do this to each other. And they like, I think most recently it was home automation that I tossed over to Jeff. Wait till and, you dig into this. Yeah. This is going to be the rest of your life yeah, for a exactly. while. Yeah, so, uh, exactly. Sorry, this, not sorry. These are the games we play with each other. Some people throw a football around. We just throw around uh, black holes of time towards one another. Now, this is a tech show, so can I, let me just move this toward, toward sure. the actual machinery of what the, what we're actually leading toward here. Yes, we talked about this last show. ASI is going to solve it all. Remembers everything. Moving yes. on. Microsoft Recall, which I yes. think has actually been recalled. Um, <laughs> the idea was that it would take snapshots of your computer screen yes. every, every few seconds yes. and then put it all into AI and you would be able to look back yep. and know anything about what you saw or what sure. you did. Any article that you happened to read. We saw the, the demo for Google Gemini, which was really cool. Yeah. It uses a camera, the camera's on, and you say, Google, where did I leave my glasses? And it says, oh, you left them over by the Apple, by the yeah. keyboard with the, with the, Apple. the Apple. Whatever it was. I mean, I forgot what the demo said, but see, again, if I if I had that hyper I think there's a certain blacklist of words that Google's not allowed to put in the demo, and Apple? I'm pretty sure Apple is high on that list. <laughs> maybe, maybe. You set it over next to the statue of Steve Jobs. You're like, no, we don't do that here. Exactly. And then Google also had another one that they were, they were demoing called Pixel Screenshots, which was screenshots, but they were taken manually, but then they went into the AI and then you could, you know, recall whatever information was in those. So same idea. Apple AI, you know, that wants to help you to make photo albums so that you yeah. can remember things via your photos or videos. Pretty cool. You know about Limitless. Yeah. So, so Limitless, I think it started off as Rewind. So Rewind does exactly sort of what you're talking about there with, with, with Recall. That was the intent. I think they started around transcription of meetings, but then really trying to take, I believe they did screenshots of what you were running and using, yeah. trying to tell you where you were and what you did so you could recall it. I believe that was their, their primary focus. Um, and there are, by the way, there are other tools before you get into screenshotting and audio recording that I think add tremendous value to to uh, sort of capturing what you're doing. There's a program called Rescue Time that I've been using for over a decade that will tell you what apps you're in and what you're doing and just give you a time breakdown at the end of the week so you can figure out where you're spending your time. Yeah. Am I spending most of my time in a, you know, in a coding editor? Am I spending most of my time in, in email? Like what websites are it's you on? It's all in WikiWand. You're just going down rabbit holes all week long. Oh, Jesus. Man, the WikiWand output, 
it's like it's kind of like the first time I discovered a really good sushi restaurant, and I went there for a year, and I got the sure. Amex bill, sure. and they break it down by <laughs> vendor, and I was like, do not look at that number. I literally went into them the next day. I used to go there like literally seven, eight times a week. I went there every day for lunch, and I went in the next day, and I was like, I literally pay the fucking light bill here. Like, how about I start paying your electricity bill, and you don't charge exactly. me for food, and we'll just exactly. do that? And they were like, no, no, that's a bad deal for us. And now you have mercury poisoning. Yeah. Well, I, don't know. I can tell the temperature. Yeah. So, so rewind <laughs> to something similar, right? Like, there's a bunch of these that are in similar buckets that are doing capture on your digital device. So you're you're using your your laptop and it's capturing what you're doing. It's capturing your audio and your meetings, giving you transcripts, summaries, yeah. using a healthy AI to it. Limitless is really interesting. So they announced earlier this year a pendant, right? One of the many AI pendants that from what I can tell, yeah. uh, it's still a little vapor, but from what I can tell is designed to record all of your interactions right. outside of your device, right? So when you're just walking around, you and I are walking down the street, you know, in Santa Monica talking about life. Sure. I can capture that. I've postulated this idea for decades, right? What does it look like yeah. when you've got the processing power and really the battery life to capture everything that I do? And, and obviously I talk a lot, so voice is a lot. Yeah. I think this is super fascinating and being able to, to capture it all in a form that is then transcribed and searchable right. is really neat. Is it going to be valuable? I'm not sure. I think there will be value in to it. To me, the audio capture is way more useful than the screenshot totally. capture. The screenshot thing is not going to be that interesting to totally. me. But the audio, everything I talk to, everybody I talk to, I used to, yep. when I would do a ton of video calls during the pandemic and just slightly pre pandemic, I had a human I hired to come into the meetings with me yeah. so that she could take all the notes yeah. because I can remember things mostly if I just focus and pay attention and don't take notes totally. and she took notes in case we needed yeah. to go back and, go and, back and, and look it. at anything. Yeah. yeah, it was great. I don't think we used the notes much because yeah. because I was not having to think about taking notes, I was able to focus on what was being said. I agree with you on the audio aspect for a couple of reasons. One, we both talk really fast. A lot. I think the, our highest bandwidth communication mechanism is speech. So you're going to get a lot of both input and output via speech. It's also extremely ephemeral oh, yeah. if you don't do what you're just saying, right? If you don't note take it. So For sure. if you get a copy of that and then you transcribe it and you make it searchable, yeah. to me that's super valuable. I still see good value in screenshotting though too, because even for this show, inevitably there are times where I'm like, damn it, I saw a link last week about the blah, blah, blah that I want to share with our listeners and I got to spend real brain power going to find it. If I have this audio thing recording me, yeah. I will just say it aloud. I'll just say the title and then oh, I can sure, go back sure, to sure, it sure. anytime. Yeah, you just get used to that. You're just a weird old guy in the library talking to himself now, which is fine. You've already got the hair. So you're, you're most the way there. I'm sure I did it when I was a kid. Can't imagine I would have been any different. Saying things out loud, trying to lock into yeah. your brain. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do that. that. That's one of the, the. I'll call it a trick. I didn't, I learned this trick myself. I didn't like read it in a book, but it's what a lot of people do. When I meet somebody yes. and they tell me their name, I always repeat it back because it's, there's a much better chance of it getting locked into my brain. One, I've confirmed I've said it correctly. Yes. Two, I've locked into my brain. Now, if I mishear your name, you are forever fucked. If I meet you oh, and I yeah, think sure, I hear your sure. name is Paul. Oh, hey, Paul, nice to meet you. Oh, it's Jeff. Nope. You're Paul. You're Paul forever in my mind. I can't tell you the number of people who think my name is Jess. Oh, really? Jess? Yeah. You know, you think about the name like CJ, yeah. and that's a pretty unique name. Some people still call me Caesar, which I find hysterical, and I just don't correct, <laughs> correct them. I'm like, Caesar? Sure. sure. I'll, I'll go with that. Also, what's interesting about having a name like CJ is, I'm assuming as Jeff, you hear Jeff now and again in public referring to other people. Sure, of course. And you probably don't get whiplash when they say Jeff, because you know in your brain that people are Jeff. No. I was waiting in line with my wife in Maui to get shave ice. And there was this big group in front of me that was kind of annoying the shit out of me because they had one person in line. And then before you know it, they had 15 people in line. Right, right. You know, four people injecting is fine. 15, like your whole fucking family, like really? Right. But okay, fine. So I'm already mildly annoyed. And then I keep hearing this woman say, eh, CJ, let me see your phone. And I'm like, what? And I, my head kept snapping up. And then I realized one of their kids' names is CJ. CJ. And finally, I'm like, dude, what's your name? <laughs> and he's like, CJ. I'm like, no, no, what's your real name? Sure. And then he tells me, and I'm like, calling him CJ. He's like, since like elementary school. And I was like, oh, that's funny. So it's me and him. And he actually said he had another CJ in his class. Oh, wow. And then, and they go by CJ Squared, which I thought was pretty funny. So when he was leaving, he was across the parking lot. I yelled CJ Squared. Was his name the same as your name? No, no, no. no. It was much, oh, okay. much, much worse. <laughs> it's like... I like your name. Connor Jasky. And I was just oh, like, oh, okay, well, that's okay, why I love okay. CJ. Like, eh, yeah, sure. It's terrible. Sure. Like, middle name. Nice kid. Super nice kid. Yeah. So when I hear CJ, like my head will, I will give myself whiplash looking at it because it, it yeah. almost always is me. When I hear Jeff, I will actually start walking a little faster. <laughs> away from Just the, in case it is meant for me. <laughs> away from the sound. <laughs> my God. Limitless is interesting. This limitless pendant, it's a little vaporware. And I will say, typically, if you want a product to not come to market, have me buy it before it's made. Oh, for sure. 
For sure. I tend to have a really good track record with this. Uh, look no further than the Fisker Ocean, which is literally the only car I've ever put. A deposit on that never came. Deposit sure. on for my father, and then they went fucking bankrupt. So, you know, I'm not grumpy about that or anything. Thanks, Henrik. So this this Limitless Pendant is like a little tiny, you know, it's the size of uh, a couple quarters stacked up, a little magnet. It's a wearable AI. Yeah, sure, sure. The promise, it's like a hundred bucks. The promise is that it's going to record everything that you do and then give it to you in an AI, which the general concept I think is mm -hmm. fantastic. I love this idea. I'm really keen to see their implementation because, and, and they're promising the moon, right? They're promising everything that you would want, everything that we would want to talk about on this show, they are promising as part of this solution. Yeah. They're saying things like uh, it's privacy protected with a confidential cloud, whatever the fuck that means. It's made up. It's just a made up set of words. None of it can be true. Well, I bet there's they're doing something. I bet it's beyond ROT13. Recall was storing everything in plain text, yeah. which does give you a greater surface area of attack than at least if you even just rot 13. Did. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, I say that jokingly, but but technically it is true. If you put some modicum of encryption on, you are at least pre preventing somebody who's just on disk slurping stuff up from getting it. Sure. They seem to be doing some things that are nice. They're By the way, when you talk about a little device uh -huh. that remembers everything you do, everything you say, whether it's screenshots or, or it's just listening to audio and it's transcribing it, safety becomes a huge, huge totally. issue. Totally. This is like a ground zero. This is going to be the problem everybody has to face. Safety and access, right? I think those two things, I think of those things as separate. I can have a, a cold wallet. I can have a, a storage of a chunk of data yeah. that is relatively well protected from anyone else. I can give you my cold wallet and say, fucking good luck, right? I've got the key. Yeah. And it's pretty hard because you're trusting in, in at least currently public key cryptography. Yeah. And I've got the key. Harder to do here for the reasons you mentioned. The signal they have talked about, they could just open up the database for anybody who wants totally. to look at it. Yeah. Because it's so encrypted, you're yep. not going to be able to get any information from it anyway. No. Um, but you, They can't get any information from it. I mean, you could glean some metadata. There would be something in that, but the point is you're not getting any. There's the date you signed up for the service, and there's the date you last used the service, and those things are kept to a plus or minus 24-hour resolution, so you sure. get very little. Very little, but still something. Nothing. Incremental. Nothing of something. any value. The point being, you're not getting a lot, right? You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who somebody else is talking to, right? because that's all... No social graph, then you're gonna, you don't get anything. Yep. But the problem is with these memory services, yeah. they need to actually do work on them on the server. If you talk to Google's voice recognition system to, to like dictate, right? Yeah. Your voice is being sent it's not broken down into text when it's being sent. Just that your voice is being sent to their servers where it gets put into text. And the reason for that is the quantity of processing required yeah. just for speech to text is significant. And if you go too fast for the Google system, they just spin you up onto a second computer. Sure. And the, so this one is yeah. working on this sentence. That one's working on this sentence. This one, that's not the same thing as the little pin on your shirt. Your little pin on your shirt can't do that. Yeah. Okay. But I will say that we are very quickly marching toward a world where that's going to change. The little pin on my shirt's not sending anything to the cloud. Sure. The little pin on the shirt is sending shit to my phone, which is then sending it to the cloud. It doesn't really matter. It's the same problem. No, it does matter. It absolutely matters. Your phone still doesn't have enough power. I do believe you will see these things running locally, right? That's, this is what Apple's really It doesn't pushed. happen now. It doesn't happen even close to now. May or may not. Um, not far away. It, I mean, especially with some of these, no these narrow AIs to do specific things. It can get a keyword if you are trying to wake up your digital assistant, but it can't get whole sentences and things if you're if you're prattling on dictation at full speed. For transcription? It is not getting it locally. Oh, you can you can 100% do transcription locally. No, sir. I think most of it's happening on the servers. The point is it's going to get there very soon, right? You can already do I it. do think you will get there relatively you soon. You are going to, I think when you start to get into mass use, there's a couple problems. One, guess what, what the downside is for these companies to do on the servers? It's really fucking expensive. Yeah. If you're Google or Microsoft or Apple, you can probably absorb that cost. If you're a startup, you don't want that fucking cost. You want it running on someone else's chip. So you've got a good reason to push this off. Well, you've got two problems. Yeah. Storing all those yeah. images, all those snapshots of your screen sure. will be significant quickly. And this is where, going back to Recall, this is where I think Re Recall got into the initial bit of, of, of bad uh, media and trouble because the initial release, everything was sort of plain text locally, including your screenshots, right? Which is a, a, a huge risk. Yeah. Getting back to Limitless, because again, they are promising some things that I think are interesting and I want to see how these how these sort of unfold in the next six to 12 months. They talk about, okay, data being encrypted at rest and it's encrypted in transit and using TLS. Like they're doing all of the things that you would expect them to do at a minimum. And then they say that it's protected and that, you know, you need the keys to be able to decrypt it, blah, sure, blah, blah. Sure, how sure. it's actually implemented when, when researchers get in there to show like how much of this is obscure 
obscurity and how much of this is real. Right. That will be super interesting. Again, they have to have the key because they have to be able to do the processing on their servers. Yeah, I don't know how. I don't know what they're doing to store the keys separately. There is still value, even if they have the keys. I know you're going to disagree with this. Completely disagree. Yeah, yeah. they can unlock and see anything. But it is still more secure to have encrypted data stored with keys alongside it than to not have encrypted data. It's a parasol in a hurricane. But it's un I think it's unreasonable to dismiss that and say that, okay, you haven't done everything that you can to protect it, therefore it doesn't matter. If you say, okay, even if data is encrypted and we keep the keys over here in a secure special place, even if it's not secure and special, that's still an incremental improvement. Now you can focus on, on key storage and access. But treat it like you're broadcasting when you're talking to those oh, kinds of... Oh, sure, it's a human. Sure, sure, sure. Because your information can get out. If your information can get out, treat it like it will get out. Sure. At some point, you go, am I doing enough to protect this asset relative to the value of the asset? Yeah. I think that's the way you have to look at all security. I don't think you do that when it comes to data you actually need to be secure. Sure. When it comes to data you actually need to be secure, it needs to stay on your local machine, never leave your local machine. Anything that happens to it happens on your local machine. Sure. No option. And the code needs to be open source. We need to see that it actually does what it says. I'm trying to understand where we are in the spectrum of this currently, which is what I think is so interesting about Limitless. But they bring something up in their little spiel about this that I thought was really interesting. And I haven't seen this talked about much elsewhere. And I'm very curious to get your thoughts on this. They make this claim. They literally say in bold, your data is legally protected. And I was like, okay, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know what that means. Yeah. Well, listen to this. Their argument is that the Fifth Amendment protects you from having to perform the act of producing incriminating documents. Okay. You can file a motion to quash a subpoena for your limitless data. Doesn't mean you'll get it. Exactly. I don't know any of that to be true, right? You're basically saying yeah, none of that's true. None of that's true. And I understand the Fifth Amendment, you know, at least in broad strokes, that I don't have I don't have to, to produce any evidence against me. Right. But how do you say that at the subpoena level? I'm not even sure how you could because right. you could say the same thing about your search history. Apple is required to turn over your iCloud data. If they get a subpoena, they, and they do, and they turn over your iCloud data because they have no choice. Unless their practice is different, which is what they are implying, yeah. you don't even know that there is a subpoena. Of course not. Apple doesn't send you a note to say, hey, by by the way, your data was right. just subpoenaed. Now, maybe they're saying as, as a point of, of practice, we're going to do this. They can't. They can't. The letter that they get with the subpoena will say that they can't tell anyone anything. They, they don't allow that. So I'm not sure how that's going to going to play out. It comes with a gag order. And then if I if I accept their premise that this is true, I could file a motion to quash and I even knew about it, yeah. then in theory, you could say the same thing about my search history. Yeah. My search history could be incriminating. I have no, I have a Fifth Amendment protection to not incriminate myself. So why can't I quash that subpoena? I've never known of that being done. You can't. <laughs> now, but, but is they're that, just making this up. Well, but you say you can't, but you can't based on what? There's no Fifth Amendment right that allows you to block someone from getting data about something you've done, even if you're the one who generated the data. That's how policing works. I, I'm not sure that has been proven. That would preclude all policing. No, I don't think it would preclude all, 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 yes. all policing. I mean, when they have, uh, I guess, yeah, we, I guess when you when you're when you're pulled over and they 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 have a legitimate right to search your vehicle, you can't say, well, you can't look at this. Of course not. Like, I can't incriminate myself. I'm really fascinating to see how this goes on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop short of saying that you just can't do it because I don't know of any case law where this has been tried and, and failed. The first one that gets raised, they'll fail. Well, maybe the first one already has been raised. We just haven't heard about it, right? I'm not saying it hasn't well, sure. been raised. I'm saying we haven't heard about it. Yes, a gag order often accompanies a subpoena. I mean, I do I do have some friends that are, are in the federal government that have to deal with some of this shit. The amount of crazy gibberish lawsuits they get is fascinating. I'm sure. This is a pretty bold claim to be made by these guys. And these guys aren't asshats. They have a they have a a, a history, a successful history, right? I think this is the guy who started this guy started optimizely and sold it to Google for a bajillion dollars. So this isn't, you know, like like it's the clown hour, but I'm really fascinated to see how this is going to unfold because I don't know of any protection for that. And they're saying it's like their third bullet. Like it's not like it's buried in the TOS where they say, oh, you might be able to fit them in. Sure, sure, sure. It's sure. like their third bullet. That's not how subpoenas work. So, uh, you know, good luck. It's fascinating to me because I can read this and go, well, yeah, I could see a world for that. But then I'm like, but wait, no. Right? Then the logical part you of your believe brain because you in. want to believe. Sure. Listen, let me be clear. I want this recall device so badly. For me, this would be so useful in my life. And the version of it that I want, I don't care about the screenshot thing. That might matter to you because you're more visual than I am. Sure. But it's got to be text-to-speech. It's got to be local only. The conversion and the storage have to happen locally. Nothing ever leaves my device. Got to be open source. I want a hardware mic switch so I can physically disable the mic array from sure. committing anything, you know, to its memory so it can't hear me when I don't want it to hear me and then I think I'm good to go then I would love this thing is that if it had a switch would that be enough to get you to use it yeah if, if it had a physical hardware oh yeah for sure really nothing ever leaves the device everything's got to stay on the device oh okay so you wouldn't use it as it's built not even close yeah okay you're, you're not interested in using one of these things until it, it stays local and 
what? All data stays local. All processing on the data happens locally. Happens locally. Data yep. never leaves. Sure. Literally, it doesn't need an internet connection. Why does it need an internet connection? Everything happens locally. Yeah, then I'm in. Then I'm 100% in. You know, you might not be that far away from that. I think when you, if you look at like the moves that Apple has made no. in trying to push more and more AI locally, yes, you need more processing power. Yes, they're not doing exactly what you're talking about. It doesn't even vaguely resemble they're, they're, what I'm talking about. They're far about. away from that, but they're setting the groundwork for that. I'm cautiously optimistic. You're probably going to tell me not to be, and, and, and I think you, you may be right. I'm not. I think that kind of processing is around the corner. I honestly don't think we're here now, but I think we're, we're moving there quickly. But I'm cautiously optimistic. Thing. What part I was going to say is that I think people might be aware now of the importance of this compared to like search and social when we weren't as oh, aware yeah, of the sure. importance of this, right? And I'll tell you the one thing I did like about Facebook yeah. was, and, and now I don't need it because I have other ways of doing this, but in, in the early days, yeah. it remembered anniversaries and birthdays, which sure. I absolutely loved. Wasn't that a great feature? That's yeah. so pedestrian. That's such a basic thing. Yeah. But man, it was just when it first came out, that so, was so great. I mean, even some of the basic functionality now that you see in like Google Photos or Amazon Photos or any of them, uh, iPhone built in where it's like, oh, you're in the same place at the same time. Let me show you photos of this trip last year. Sure. Right? Whether it's a holiday trip or something you always do in the summer. I always think that's super cool, especially with kids. When kids, you know, they get older. If you keep feeding them gerbil food, they keep getting older and bigger. So you just <laughs> you're like, oh, look, you were so cute back then before you learned to yell at me. Like you get to see <laughs> these pictures of them, which is fantastic. We all have digital shoe boxes full of images. Being able to sort through it's the hard part. One more thing on photos and then we, we got to get out of here. Have you seen Google add me? No, I haven't. What is it? You take a photo, a group photo, and you can add someone. Oh, who yes. There. I know what it's called. And it's yeah, yeah. perfect. I love it's it. It's so cool. I love it. All right. We got to get out of here. But quickly before we do, have you seen or read anything good this last week? Well, as you know, I'm on vacation. Yes, I do. Uh, as I mentioned earlier. So um, and you would think, I don't know, maybe some people like watch shit on their vacations. I don't. We're <laughs> usually more experiential. Like we usually like, go outside, go to the beach. Why would you watch something? Zip lining. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're not doing any. We've made it a point on this past trip to not do any of that. Like I don't do the zip line. I don't do the fucking boat tour. I want to just be pedestrian. I want to just sit down. So it's been a lot of reading okay. and a lot of like just staring at Maui. What's wrong with that? And Maui and Lanai have been lovely. We're just enjoying our time in Maui. I will also suggest when you come here, get the shave ice, get the good shave ice, not the shitty shave ice because it's unlike anything you've ever had before. I always do. I don't understand how ice is that smooth, but it's a physics problem. I think it's different here. I'm not sure. Einstein something. By the way, if you buy the shave ice machine and bring it home to California, uh -huh. it won't make the same good shave ice. Oh, I know. It doesn't work here. My wife loves shave ice and I bought her yeah. a shave ice attachment and it makes really good shave ice, but it is like third standard deviation to the left compared to what you can get here. Completely a different thing. Like I'm literally, I had my head in their hut. I was like, what the fuck? Are, how are you doing this? The shaver looks the same. <laughs> like what's in the water? Like tell me the secret sauce. Like eh, it's shit. Around. Yeah, they do something. Anyway, yeah. I don't come to Hawaii often because it feels a lot like home. It feels a lot like LA. Uh -huh. But when you get onto island time, everything just sort of slows down. And you're just sort of like, it's just great. Like, hey man, the light's fucking green. Why don't you go? And you're like island time. Like who fucking cares? <laughs> like what, what are you, where are you going? Where are you in a hurry? What? They're going to cancel your reservation because you're fine. Like fuck it. Just relax. <laughs> it's been super nice, a nice, uh, much needed retreat. So the thing that I've seen that's good this week is uh, is Maui. Is Maui. That's saying. a pretty great thing yeah. to see. How about you? 32 Sounds, a really unusual documentary. Sam Green's movie is all about audio. Speaking of auditory uh, memory, how we hear it, why it moves us, the different ways in which it can be heard, how audio can transport us in time. At one point, a rocket scientist finds an old tape of himself at the age of 11 telling his future self that he hopes he becomes an astronaut or something like that. That. Oh, that's amazing. I hope you achieve all of our dreams. That moment is just so, it's, it's absolutely lovely. Oscar winning sound designer Mark Mangini, Dune, Mad Max, Road Fury, yeah. said the film opens a window into the often ignored world of our every waking moment. Listening critically sheds light on how I think and behave and perhaps opens another window on how we use sound as a vital narrative tool in cinema. I want to be clear. This movie is not for everybody. You will not cry. You will not laugh. You will not be scared. The usual things that mass entertainment does, but you will be challenged to think about about sound and its importance to our thinking. 32 Sounds, buy it or rent it on Apple TV now. This is super cool. I'm fascinated by this premise because I am a guy not like, I don't have the same love of sound that you have. You have an, an, an affliction for it that is different. Affliction is the right word. Yeah, I know. I've met you. But I love having it on and around me. This is really fascinating to me. Um, I also happened to watch one of his films on the way over, the sound designer's uh, Dune. I watched Dune for the first time on the way oh, over. Oh, for sure. And the sound is great. I'm, I'm not sure I'm into the film yet or not, but the sound was in, in, incredible. So yeah, sure. This is, this is super cool. <laughs> I am fascinated by this. As somebody 
who's been, you know, we've both done this with our children, recording them at a younger age in both audio and video. Yeah. I love a couple things. One, I love being able to, to see it as parents in the past. I love my kids being able to see it in the past. We'll see if they agree or not. Sure. But you're also in a place where like in the not too distant future, I could potentially build like an AI of my kid's brain when he was eight. Wouldn't it be great to be able to talk to a 10 year old version of yourself? And if you had enough recordings, you could probably do that. You load into an AI and be like, yeah. well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then it would just, it would just say, not you. And then yeah. we would just move on. And I'd be like, oh, well, that was worth all the hell. The nice thing about me is that the 10 year old of me would have fit on half an SD card. Totally. I wouldn't even need the whole thing. No, it'd be very quick. Yeah. All right. I'm going to definitely check that out. 32 sounds, sounds super cool. What a, what an oddball for us, but it sounds great. But it just fit with today's episode. Totally. So I thought it was good. Matt. Fits with you. This is a movie made for you. That is the episode. Thank you for joining us for all this nonsense. It's really terrible podcast from The Awful Company. This is on the web at nonsense.productions. I'm Steele. I'm Jeff Parker. If you like this program, please follow, download, subscribe, and like it. Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Antenna Pod, iHeartRadio, Spotify, my favorite Overcast, or wherever you may get your podcast from. Nonsense is produced using the Audur Multitrack Digital Audio Workstation. Amazing, full featured software, open source, and free. This trick where you can understand me talking while music plays underneath is done with Audur. Check it out. Special thanks to our floor director, Scotty Bensick. Mud on. We'll be here every Thursday morning for more nonsense. Please join us. <laughs> So this is it. I won't see you for two weeks. What do you think the craziest thing is going to happen while you're gone? All the AI at the Olympics becomes sentient and wants to compete as their <laughs> own country.